Shalom. Welcome again to another special edition of Torah Watchman Show. We're going into the Haftaris for, for Parashah Kitavo from the prophet of Isaiah. Isaiah is probably the greatest of all prophets next to Moshe, I would say, bar none. Anyway, with all the evil in the world and all the issues that Carter Jews face on a daily basis of, of being just, you know, cap in a closet per se, America's Me Too moment, how about Me Too? You remember, a Cardi Jew is just as significant as a Jew as any rabbin, right? But regardless of that, no matter where you are, or where you go in the world, the world is filled with, with just a, a cancerous kind of plague of, of negativity and war and discrimination and bigotry and everything else, anti-Semitism. But how about a refreshing, a refreshing new message of hope and peace? And this is what I read uh, today um, in, in synagogue. I want to share a little bit with you. Turn with me to chapter 60, and I'm going to be reading in English to you without a lot of paraphrasing. Arise, shine, for your light has come. We're talking about Israel. And the glory of the Lord has shone upon you. Be happy. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and a gross darkness of the kingdoms, and the Lord shall shine upon you, and his glory shall appear over you. No matter what the darkness is upon the planet, no matter what the, the sin of the nations is standing against Israel, even in the days of Meshach, there's going to be a great war. Regardless of what's happening, there's battle between the light and the darkness, right? Verse 3, and nations, and nations, shall go by your light and the kings by brilliance of your shine. Isn't that wonderful? Shine on me, right? You're talking about uh, um, the, uh, the light of the Torah going forth between the, uh, among the nation of the earth. Israel is that crystal cathedral, that, that light of hope upon the hill that should not be hidden, right? And the world will eventually gravitate toward that light and leave the darkness behind them. So uh, then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall be startled and become enlarged. Your heart will grow eager for change, positive change you can believe in, right? For the abundance of the West shall be turned over to you. Everything that has been stolen and raped and molested, and you hear about plagiarism and patent infringement, whatever it may be, uh, treasure, storehouse in the Vatican, stolen from the Jewish people, no matter where it is, it's going to be gathered up and, and sent back to the original owners of Eretz Israel. It's so sweet that for SIO to really speak about these truths here. And foreigners shall build your walls. You know, in America, you know, we're talking about building the wall with, uh, between us and Mexico so we can have solidarity. So a nation is known by walls and culture and language. Um, it's differentiated from other nations of the world. Well, every, every city needs walls, right? Every, every town and fortress needs some sort of fortification. Jerusalem was invaded uh, 16 times by foreign nations and destroyed twice. So this is what it's talking about. And in every Sidra, when you pray about the future, you pray for rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Well, there are walls built supposedly by the Roman Empire over the city that they destroyed in 135 CE. We're not going there. But rebuilding the walls is reconstitution of something that was destroyed in the past, essentially. That's what the prophet is saying. And foreigners would do the work for you. And they shall open your gates always, day and night, and they shall not be closed to bring to you the wealth of the nations and their kings in possession. You know, Roman Catholic, uh, king and queen in 1492 in Spain forced the Jews to be baptized, to be uh, killed, imprisoned, or exiled. And they took all of their property away. This has happened in Poland. It's happened in other nations. Um, it's dotted throughout our history how we have uh, accumulated wealth from the hard work and the sweat and tears of our families over a period of time, only to have it stolen away. Well, you know, there's going to be retribution. 
You hear about retribution all the time. You give me this, give me that. You owe me this, social welfare. You listen, listen, nothing is past the beautiful eyes of Elohim, right? This is what the prophet Isaiah was talking about. The glory of Lebanon, okay? The Golan Heights up there, you hear about imminent war between Hezbollah and Israel. Think about that. Shall come to you, it's box trees, firs, and cypresses together to glorify the, the palace, my sanctuary, the Mishkan, the third temple, the third and very last temple that will never be destroyed again, and the place of my feet. Elohim is talking about where his throne and Shamayim will be in, set forth in the throne of the temple. In the days of the Mashiach, the cedar trees that will be well known in Lebanon, the time of King Solomon and the golden age of Israel did not time, will cut down and hewn down and carved and everything else to build that beautiful temple. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. <clears throat> so in 14, and the children of your oppressors shall go to you, bend over, and those who despise you shall prostrate themselves at the soles of your feet, and they shall ca call out to you, the city of the Lord, Zion, Holy One of Israel. Imagine, this is Zechariah 8, 23. It really is. Um, verse 15, instead of being, of being your forsaken and hated without passerby, you know, spitting upon Jews, it happened leading up to the Holocaust, right? Uh, literally. Spitting at Jews, cursing at Jews, all of this kind of thing would be completely reversed, okay? Um, I will make you an everlasting pride, the joy of every generation. You know, isn't that wonderful and sweet? Isn't that hopeful, no matter what's going on in Israel? You, you see all these protests in Tel Aviv and uh, calls for, for the, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the duly elected prime minister, to be out, outed from the Knesset. Um, you see all of this almost civil war and conflict. I hear about Jews being murdered almost every week. I already have soldiers losing their lives. There seems no end to the suffering and pain throughout Judea and Samaria. But you know there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's what Isaiah said. And all the prophets are known as prophets of, of Elohim by two things. They're, they speak on behalf of Elohim. Their prophecies come true 100% of the time, and they ha they're 100% accurate every time, too, right? Compare that to Nostradamus. Anyway, Reb Yoav Emmett signing out. Listen, lots of love for you, no matter who you are. Don't worry about discrimination. Don't worry about, about all the issues that, that you had just no control of. I was talking to a know-how today in my shul, and I said, you have no control of these negative things in your life. He is, he is really torn apart by his past, by his father. And I said, you need to focus on the future. We have to move forward. But you don't, you, know, you don't have to move forward by yourself. You move forward with your spoke on your family. We need to lift up one another. We don't need to be tearing down one another. Listen, there may be robbing us out there that don't care anything about me and call me something other than a Jew. They made a legitimized Lashana rod just because they don't think I'm Jewish enough for them because I traced most of my uh, Jewish ancestry through my paternal line, then only recently I found through my mother. But anyway, this is the plight of Baal Teshuvah Jews, it's the plight of Nohide, it's the plight of Cardi Jews alike. I'm for the underdog. I will fight for you. I am not ashamed to get out the image truth to you. And if I see something hopeful like this, like Isaiah, I will be the first one to get on the hill and, and to scream out loud, the Lord loves you, the Lord has a plan for you, for redemption and salvation. May we all say, Amen. Rabbi Arabin Emmett signing out. Until the next time, take care and Shavuot Tov.